Hello and welcome to the Stardog Academy training on Python. This is Joseph Hayes, one of the senior software engineers at Stardog. To let you know a little bit more about me, I love helping customers maximize the value they can get from their data by implementing innovative solutions to complex data problems. Today, I'm going to walk through managing and querying Stardog with Python. In this training session, you will learn how to create a Python virtual end and install PyStarDog, manage the Stardog server with PyStarDog, query Stardog, and demonstrate PyStarDog in a Jupyter notebook. Let's get started. This section is about getting started. Stardog's functionality is exposed via an HTTP API. PyStardog wraps the HTTP API to make it easier for Python developers to interact with the server. PyStardog uses the popular Python request library to communicate with the Stardog server. PyStardog aims to have feature parity with the Stardog HTTP API. For more information about the underlying HTTP API, visit this link. HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash stardog dash union dot github dot io forward slash http dash docs forward slash. In order to use PyStardog, you will need a local copy of Stardog to run the commands against. You can follow the install and setup instructions located at https colon forward slash forward slash www.stardog.com forward slash get dash started forward slash. You can always make sure the server is running with this command, stardog dash admin server status. Python virtual environments allow many projects to have their own isolated Python environments with specific versions of dependencies installed. More information can be found at https colon forward slash forward slash docs dot python dot org forward slash three forward slash tutorial forward slash v e n v dot html to start experimenting with pystardog we're first going to create a virtual environment to contain the pystardog dependencies i'm just going to copy the command from here I'm going to go to my terminal and I'm going to create a virtual environment for running the tutorial. We then activate the virtual environment. So I'm going to come here. I'm just going to grab the command and I'm now going to do that. And you see we have the little, uh, my, my prompt shows the virtual environment we are currently in. And then I'm going to install the requirements. So I'm going to make a directory here for the tutorial. And then I'm going to install my requirements. Now in this case, we're installing not only PyStarDog, but several libraries we're gonna use during our tutorial. That's why it's taking a little while there. As a reminder, PyStarDog wraps the functionality of the StarDog DBMS, right? The database management system. Um, and it interacts with it using the underlying HTTP API. Now, in PyStardog, there are two main classes used to interact with the server. Stardog.admin.admin, with a capital A, which allows you to administer a Stardog server. And we give the link where you can get more information about that class. In addition, you also have Stardog.connection.connection, with a capital C, and that allows you to connect to Stardog databases. 
And again, we give the link to the documentation on the connection class. This concludes the section on getting started with Python. This section is about examples. Below is an example of how to create an admin object. The admin object has methods that allow the server to be administered. For example, creating databases or configuring the server settings. We can create a new stored query using the new underscore stored underscore query method. Or we can list stored queries on the server using the stored underscore queries method. We can also run a stored query by simply calling select on a stardog.connection and then passing in the name of the stored query. We can also use PyStardog to create virtual graphs. In this example, we're creating an object called example VG options that contains items like the name of the JDBC driver class, the username and password we'll use to connect to the remote database server, as well as the JDBC URL. We pass this object, a mapping file, and a name to the admin class's new underscore virtual underscore graph method. We can also manage databases on the server. Database objects have a variety of methods such as online, offline, backup, drop, copy, repair, and set options. You can read the complete documentation about the database object at the link provided in the slide. We give an example here of how we can use the database method of the admin class to retrieve an object that represents a database on a Stardog server. We can also list the databases on a Stardog server. We can retrieve a list of objects and each one represents a different database. We can get the names of the databases right by um, using a for loop over the objects returned from the databases method. We can also use PyStardog to create and drop a database. So in this example we're creating a database using the new underscore database method we would pass the database name and any options we want the new database to have. We can drop an existing database by retrieving a reference to it and then calling its drop method. And finally, we can copy a database to a new name by calling the copy method on any database object. We can also create connections. So below is an example of how to connect to a database on a Stardog server. The connection object is configured with server details. It has methods that allow the database to be interacted with. So in this example, I'm creating a connection to the PyStardog tutorial database. We give the endpoint of the server, which happens to be localhost colon 5820, and then the username and the password required to authenticate to the database. We can also create transactions. We can call a begin method to start a new transaction and then commit. Now, if we need to discard the changes in the transaction, we can call the rollback method of the connection object. We can also add it data. So in this example, data from turtle files are added to the database by calling the add method of the connection object. Notice we're doing this within a transaction. And we can also just insert triples directly from strings. And we can do that by adding a stardog content raw object, right? And we could pass our turtle string and then we pass the mime type, in this case text forward slash turtle. We can also query PyStar using PyStarDog. So in this example, we're querying the database using a connection, the connection select method to be exact. So we pass in the query and then we pass in the content type. So we want to receive back CSV formatted results. So you notice that once we get it back in, we can use a 
a method that can read a CSV file and then display a few rows of that. Finally, we can also make a chart. So we import the needed libraries and plot the query results in a chart. So in this example, we're using Pandas is a data analysis and manipulation module. And Seaborn is the library we will use for making charts. So we read in a, a CSV and then we parse a date. So we get back the month numbers and then we set a style and then we plot our data on the chart. We can also do parameterized queries. Now parameterized queries are very important and you want to always do it safely because otherwise you expose your code to injection attacks. So this example demonstrates how to pass a parameter to a full text query search. So you see there we have our query which you can think of in terms of as a uh, template and then where we want to do the replaceable variable, right? We pass that um, by giving the name of the variable, in this case, query, and then the value, so star and dog. And that'll be replaced on the line that says FTS colon query, and then question mark query. We mentioned earlier about getting results in CSV format. Now PyStardog can also return the results in multiple formats besides CSV, and they include XML or JSON. So here's an example of a query that's going to return JSON instead of CSV. This concludes the section on examples. This section is the demo for the Python notebook. Here I am at my terminal, and I'm going to start up my Jupyter Notebook server. This is going to open the Jupyter Web UI, and you notice that I already have my tutorial notebook, as well as my music data file and my music schema file. So I'm going to open up the tutorial notebook. Okay. Now the first thing I'm going to do here is um, we are going to just make sure that we have already cleared any output that was there. So we're going to do that first. And now we're going to go through this cell by cell. So in our first cell, we're just basically setting up our dependencies we need to run Stardog. Right? So we're going to import PyStardog. We're also installing the Pandas uh, library and the Seaborn charting library. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is set up an object to hold our connection details for the Stardog server. And then finally, here we're going to create a new database in Stardog. So we're going to give it a name, PyStardog Tutorial. We're going to use our admin object uh, class, excuse me, we're going to create an instance of it. And then we're going to use that to check first off if a database with that name already exists. If it does, we're going to drop it. And then we're going to create a new one. So we're going to run that. Now just to kind of prove to you that I've done this, I'm again going to use my admin class here. And I'm going to loop through the databases and I'm going to print their names. So you see that I already had a few different uh, databases here. And so there is PyStardog tutorial. All right. Now we're going to connect. Let's do this step by step. We're now going to connect to the database. We're going to start a transaction. Okay. Notice that the transaction ID is returned to us. Now we've already added, um, I've already downloaded the schema and the data, so we can safely skip over that. And then we're going to now load these. So again, notice we're using the add method of the connection object. We're passing it in a file. We're going to first pass in the schema and then the compressed turtle file. Okay, 
And then finally, we're going to commit the transaction. So remember, the data is not actually written back to the database until you commit that transaction. All right. Now, we're going to query the database. So we have a music database here, and we have um, this contains information about artists, albums, songs. So we're going to get a list of the albums, and we're going to um, basically find the albums within the, the database using this query. And then we're going to return the dates, the dates that the albums were originally released. And we're going to return this as a CSV data set. In this next one, we're going to use the pandas um, read CSV method to read in the results, and then we're going to print the first few records. So there we go, and there are the first few records, and we get the dates back. Now we're going to do a little work with the dates that we just got back. We're going to grab the date and we're going to extract the month out of it. Right, so there are the months of the dates. And then we're going to plot the number of albums released in a given month. Right, and for this, we're going to use the Seaborn library. Right, so there we go. We've, um, you know, gone through our data, running that query. We've extracted out the months, and then we're plotting the number of albums that were released in a given month. So we see that in general, November is a very popular month to release albums in. Okay. Now, normally we use the with statement when we uh, work with connections, which automatically cleans them up. If we're not going to use a with statement, always remember to call the exit method on the connection and clean up after yourself. This concludes the demo portion of the Python video. That concludes the Stardog Academy training on Python, managing and querying Stardog with Python, where we reviewed how to create a Python virtual env and install PyStardog, manage the Stardog server with PyStardog, query Stardog, Demonstrate PyStardog in a Jupyter Notebook. Thanks for following along. If you have any questions, please review our Frequently Asked Questions page or head to docs.stardog.com for additional information.